Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a Diophantine system. We have two equations and we're going to be solving for, let's say, non-negative integers. I just want to include zero because if we don't, then we kind of run into some trouble. Or it's going to be more interesting that way. Anyways, we could also solve this for integers, but that would again be too many cases, in my opinion. I haven't tried it. But let's go ahead and solve this system for non-negative integers, which makes it a Diophantine equation or Diophantine system. Now, what would happen if we were solving for real numbers? There are two equations, but four variables. That basically means we're going to have infinitely many solutions. How do you represent those solutions by using a parameter? Well, there must be a way to do it. But again, that's outside the scope of this video. Anyway, so let's go ahead and take a look. I have two equations, AC plus BD equals 6, and AD plus BC equals 7. So these two equations were carefully made up so that they would not be factorable in and of themselves. So when you look at the first equation, there's no common factors. They're all different. And second equation is the same. Now, Diophantine equations and systems are fun. I made a separate video, a lecture video, on those. You can go ahead and check that out. We gotta use some special strategies. Sometimes modular arithmetic, sometimes factoring, sometimes looking at different cases, or finding some identities, so on and so forth. Finding some restrictions, or proving that there are no solutions, or proving that there are infinitely many solutions. So all of these are possible. Now, here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go ahead and add these equations. And the motivation behind it is each equation, when you look at each equation, they're not factorable, but when you combine them, we get something nice. Let's go ahead and take a look. So I'm going to go ahead and rewrite these. Smaller. AC plus BD equals 6. And AD plus BC is equal to 7. I'm going to go ahead and add these equations up. When I do, I want to write these two together. AC plus AD. And then BC plus BD equals 13. Now, obviously... We have to check, we have to make sure that whatever we get from here also works with each equation because this is a result of two different equations and whatever we get from here may not work uh, in the general case. Anyway, so factor out A, B, and then C plus D is a common factor. So we can go ahead and I like to write in alphabetical order. So... Let's go ahead and put it as A plus B times C plus D. This is the most critical part. Why? Because we had a sum of products. We had two equations. Now we got a single equation, but guess what? It's factored. Beautiful. Since A, B, C, D are all non-negative integers, A plus B and C plus D are also non-negative integers, which means we have to look at factors of 13. But there's something nice about it. Now, I apologize by the, if you can hear the plane. Uh, I mean, those are open. It's kind of warm, a little bit warm here. Anyways, um, we're going to look at factors of 13. And 13 is a prime number, so that's nice. There aren't that many. But uh, we kind of end up with four cases. A plus B equals 13. C plus D equals 1. Another case would be A plus B equals 1. And C plus D equals 13. Now, there's two more cases with the negatives, but if you look at them, like, for example, A plus B equals negative 1 and C plus D is negative 13, since A, B, C, D are non-negative, their sums cannot be negative. So these two cases are not going to be considered because they can't work. Okay? So we're going to be looking at these cases. Let's call this first one, and let's call this the second one. Depending on how much time, how much time I have left, I'm going to try to go through both cases, but at least one, okay? So let's take a look at the first case. And the second case is so similar, I guess we could leave it as an exercise for the reader. Don't hate me for that. Now, we're going to go ahead and take a look at these two equations. So how can I handle this, right? I have the sum. So I kind of got from a more complicated equation, look at that to a much, much simpler one. Look at this. Isn't that better? Much better. So we're going to look for two numbers whose sum is 13. But here's the thing. 
Do we have to go through all the cases like a equals 0, b equals 13, a equals 1, b equals 2? No, no, no. You don't need to. We're going to use an awesome method, which I use very frequently, and it is called substitution. If you said substitution, you guessed it right. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to replace a with 13 minus b and c with 1 minus d. And then plug these into one of the equations. Which one? Doesn't matter. I'm going to use the first one because the first one is, I don't know, I like it better. So let's go ahead and replace a with 13 minus b and c with 1 minus d. And guess what? This is going to give us another equation in two variables, but this time it's going to be real cool. You'll see in a little bit why. 13 minus 13d minus b plus bd plus bd, that's going to make 2bd. 2bd or not 2bd, that didn't work. Should be 2b. Anyways, so we got this. Let's go ahead and um, organize this a little bit. I want to write the 2bd first and then follow by minus b minus 13d and then 13 minus 6 is going to give me 7. But i rather uh, leave the uh, 13, 6 minus 13 on the right hand side because I'm supposed to add something to both sides. We'll make it factorable and I think it's called Simon's favorite factoring trick, SSFT. I use that a lot, in, especially with Diophantine systems or equations. Anyways, we take out a b. This gives us 2d minus 1. Now here we have to be very careful. I want to get 2d minus 1 inside the parentheses. So what should I multiply it by? And the answer is a fraction, 13 over 2. But don't worry about it. We'll fix it in a little bit. So that just means that I added 13 over 2 to both sides. So this is going to be negative 7 plus 13 over 2. We have to add the same thing on both sides so we don't change the equation, and now we didn't. Now notice that we can write this as 2d minus 1 multiply by b minus 13 over 2 equals negative 7 times 2, negative 14. That's going to give me negative 1 half. Obviously, you would probably 99% would multiply both sides by 2 to get rid of all the fractions. And if you do that, you're going to get not 4d, I want to multiply this by 2 to get rid of the fraction. So it's going to be 2d minus 1 multiply by 2b minus 13 equals negative 1. Awesome. So we got this equation. What are we going to do with it, right? Well, we're just going to look at factors. So from one equation, we got into a, two equations. We got into a single equation. And then that single equation, by way of substitution, uh, we got... Uh, two equations, so on and so forth. Anyways, it's a long story. So this is what we ended up with. So what do you do with that? Factors of negative 1 is what you need to look at, right? So how do you do that? Well, it can be 1 and negative 1 or negative 1 and 1. Let's go ahead and take a look at each case. And second case will probably be yours. If 2d minus 1 is equal to 1, I guess we could do this mentally, can't we? It's fairly simple. If 2d minus 1 is equal to 1, then that means d is equal to 1. And the 2b minus 13 equals negative 1 means 2b equals 12, and b is equal to 6. 2b or not 2b, yeah, I can say that, right? So this implies something. If d is 1, we know that a plus b is 13. we got to write this down here, copy. And c plus d is 1. Great. So now we do know that if d is 1, then c is 0. And if b is 6, a is 7. So this gives us an ordered quadruple, which I'm going to write a little later. And then from the second case, if 2d minus 1 is equal to negative 1, that means d is equal to 0. And if 2b minus 13 is equal to 1, that means b is equal to 7. So they kind of switch around. From here, if d is 0, c is 1. If b is 7, then a is 6. So they are interchangeable in that sense. So the solutions are going to be then, if you write them as ordered quadruples, 7, 6, 0, 1, and 6, 7, 1, 0. And this brings us to the end of the video. The other solutions are yours. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.